Good morning. I thought I'd talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart and that has been weighing on me a lot for a long time. This is nothing new, but it's something that is cyclical and I think important to come back to for myself, if nothing else. And that would be the idea of persisting, especially if you don't know for sure if what you're persisting for is even possible. It's kind of dusty in here. I haven't actually like sat at my desk for a while. I'm making the same coffee that I made last time. Like I, I have another one that I was gonna swap it out for, but forgot. It's a Colombian. Apparently KB was gonna give me a bag of coffee through a friend a few weeks ago and, and I never got it. So I will switch the coffee up at some point. The reason this is coming up for me is because I've recently started writing again. And if you don't know anything about me, hold on, this is the visual for you. Oh, speaking of dusty. These are the books that I've written. Now, I didn't write all these in a day, obviously. I spent a lot of time writing over the course of about a decade. How many are here? So this is nine books plus this one, which is like the handwritten um, history of magic that I wrote uh, back in 2012 when I first lived in Paris. Oh no, it's, it actually has the date here. March 19th, 2013 is when I uh, started it. And then I guess by July, I'd gotten this first draft done. It's all like illustrated and handwritten and I need to scan it again because I'm afraid that I don't have a backup of this, to be honest. Anyway, <sighs> sorry, I hope I don't get any dust in your coffee. I have a real passion for storytelling, but in reality, what I really want to write are, are these books, the, the fantasy and the science fiction that they're just stories that have been in my head since I was a kid that I've been working on that have been developing that may or may not be any good, who knows, but I, I want to make them, I want to create them. And I ended up taking a break from this because when I moved to France and I was on the verge of going bankrupt, I had a book that I was revising for a publisher, which turned into this one, Off Grid. And then I think I was probably starting on another one that I never published called Agnar's Box. And this was actually a driving force behind me finding so many coffee shops in Paris because I was always looking for somewhere to write, not just good coffee, but I wanted somewhere where I could sit, have a good coffee and spend my time writing, which is very challenging when it comes to specialty coffee shops in Paris. But I ended up putting it on pause because all that time spent writing and thinking about stories and developing this world and whatever else ran into direct conflict with what was kind of quickly becoming my job in the form of YouTube. When I was vlogging daily in the beginning, I was writing books and the vlogging was just a way of highlighting what I was up to, right? I, I considered it the story of my life. It wasn't the main thrust. It was just trying to capture like the tech project that I was in and the books that I was writing and eventually moving to France and what did that look like? And it kind of became the main thing, which was a little bit confusing for its own reasons, but it was the main thing and it was really hard to do both. I never stopped thinking about these books. In fact, like I spend a lot of time in the shower, in bed, random times, random music will make me think of a story of a character. It'll make me take some notes. And then I'll end up talking to Richard about it, my friend who's edited this book, the only non fiction book that you can still buy. You can get this one on Amazon, the rest of these, uh, should not be available anywhere. And we can talk more about that. But otherwise, like it's been very much shelved until recently. And getting back into it has brought up a lot of emotions for me. Like it's not, it's, it's been fun, but it's been a very surprising roller coaster. I also forgot to bring something to, I'm gonna throw the, the, this coffee away really quick. Okay, as, as per, I feel like there's a trend. Make sure there's no, Dustin. I feel like there's a trend. This one tends to be the popular one, so I'm gonna give you guys the Thompson twins. Dupont et Dupont in French. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna have the good news one. There's not a lot in here. I might end up stealing some of yours if you don't mind. Cheers. The thing is that I love writing but I put way too much pressure on it because when I started, I had no financial support. I was working, you know, multiple jobs. So I started writing this trilogy but right before I ended up volunteering to move to West Africa for a few years, so in like 2010, and then would write them through the rest of my time on that ship. Same with, these two might've been written about that time as well. And then when I got back to the States, I just kept going. I had different projects and, and, and kept writing. And I can't honestly say that I did it just for the pure love of it because I wanted it to be my thing. I wanted it to be the only thing that I had to do. I really wanted to be able to focus on it. And I had a hope that it would somehow financially save me. I had a lot of hard lessons to learn about the realities of publishing and the amount of money that you can actually make writing books. I learned a ton. I grew a ton, but it did end up having a negative impact on how I saw this process and 
when I took a break from it, I was also taking a break from, I guess, the pipe dream that it would eventually end up becoming my thing. Now, it's not to say that it couldn't become my thing one day. It's not to say that I couldn't end up becoming a, a very successful, like actually financially viable published author. It's possible. But as I reapproach it now, I'm approaching it with a very different mentality, which is that I just want to write for me. Like the reason these are unpublished, the reason you can't get these books is because we want to go back, review them, revise them, probably trash a few of them, take the nuggets out that are good, and then not start over entirely, but take some time to really craft all these books into what they need to be within the same world. They all exist in the same universe. And the reason that I'm telling you this isn't to hype up the books because you're not, obviously what, from what I just said, there's not a good chance that anyone's gonna get to read these for a very long time. But because I put a decade into them, not knowing if it would go anywhere, I had to face reality at one point. And now I'm coming back to it with a hope that I can do it, enjoy it, and create something that I'm really proud of, even if it's not something that I'm even remotely hopeful becomes a financial boon. I think we all end up having a lot of dreams that we want to attain for a mixture of reasons. I don't think that any given reason is necessarily bad. Money is not a bad reason. We all need money. It would be very nice to make a living doing something that we absolutely love. And you can make arguments that making a living writing, like full-time writing, a lot of the full-time writers I know are very miserable having to be on deadline and whatever else. So it's a grass is greener on the other side kind of situation a lot of the time as well. But it can be very, very hard to maintain our sense of optimism, our hope in the face of crushing reality. Like when publishers don't pick up your book or when they just don't sell as well as you would like, when you start to realize like, oh man, like when I was writing these books, I really had no idea what I was doing. And then you get into these books and you're like, ugh, they also need work. They need fixing. There's a lot of humbling and there's a recognition for me right now that I still have a very large series of mountains to climb ahead of me. There is a range of mountains ahead of me to climb if I want to continue to pursue this and to become uniquely good at it. So how do I keep from just kind of packing it in and giving up? Vlogging is very similar right now in the sense that I have a lot of fun doing this. I have a lot of fun on YouTube, but the landscape is really changing. It's it's not easy to make videos that stand out that people will actually want to watch that also feed your soul. The vlogging side of things has always been a weird mixture for me where there are types of videos that I could make that would do better, that would get more views, that would get in front of more people, but it would sacrifice the sense of intimacy and it would sacrifice the sense of like rawness that I would like to maintain in my vlog. It's what drew me to it in the first place. And I don't know that I want to get on the content creation treadmill that ends up actually ruining a lot of people. A lot of people end up really burning out, which you see across the spectrum on YouTube right now, especially a lot of people quitting what they're doing, or at least what they're most known for. So how do you continue to create the things that you want, even if you're worried that the performance is going to go down and that the audience will lose interest and that eventually you'll just be left making something that nobody really wants to watch. We live in a time where especially creative pursuits, like writing, video production, everything now is kind of under threat in a sense because we are just getting down to the bare minimum of like just dopamine rush, right? Swiping up on TikTok or Instagram reels. I don't even know what people read anymore. There's obviously still a market for books, but there's such a broad competition for our attention and it's not even direct competition. Like I don't feel like I'm competing necessarily with other vloggers or even other YouTubers for your attention so much as just your phone, Tinder and Reels and TikTok and Twitter and whatever else. A lot of this stuff's been around for a while, but like with the flood of AI generated content, with the increased efficiency of algorithms, and with the fact that a lot of these platforms really are mostly just concerned with keeping people addicted to their platforms and less and less concerned with serving them with anything of particular substance. Not to argue that my what I'm creating is of, of, of particular substance, but we're in this weird race to the bottom where I don't feel like anybody really wins. And as a result, it is leaving me questioning everything that I'm doing. Not because I don't enjoy it, not because I don't, I'm very grateful to be doing it right now, but because I want to be at least aware of the fact that it could change at any time. Like YouTube's algorithms could could change. I, I, I don't wanna blame the algorithm for anything. YouTube is generally really good at serving people things that they actually want to see. But even for me, I'm, I'm starting to get bored with what I'm seeing on YouTube. Like I watch a lot of YouTube, especially the last few years. I dove deeper and deeper and deeper. I found so many YouTubers that I really enjoy. So many different genres of video that I never thought I would be interested in. There's so much wonderful stuff on YouTube. But even there, I'm starting to feel like 
I enjoy it less and less, partially maybe because it's kind of homogenizing where people are all using the same kinds of tricks to keep people's attention. And partially maybe just because I kind of would actually rather read a book. I don't know. I'm gonna steal some coffee from you here. Thanks to Luli Gonzalez, today's patron producer, and all my patrons for being with me for a lot of this journey. Mostly for the YouTube part, I know, but still just for believing in me as a creative it has, it has meant the world to me. I think it's important to paint this picture of a very uncertain future because the future is always uncertain. It just, for me, feels very uncertain right now as to like, where, where are we going? And how is this gonna, how is this gonna end? When you have like an AI bot that comes out in a year where you literally just tell it, hey, I want to see a movie about a raccoon in space that befriends a cucumber and they blow up the moon. There will be a generative AI app in the next year or two that can just create a 90 minute movie for you and it'll be passable, right? Like you can just make whatever kind of movie you want and it'll feed you something entertaining. Whether or not it's good, eventually they probably will be good. When we live in that kind of a world, where does that leave us for creativity as, as a profession in particular? And without the doomsday scenarios like that, even like we just don't know what's coming no matter what. It leads me to wanting to renew my faith in persistence. And the idea that if I just show up and write a little bit every day, if I just show up and make a video, if I continue this conversation, if you're gonna still show up, which no guarantees that you will, I feel I also want to respect the fact that I need to be producing something that's worth your time. I need to be producing something that's worthy of you. It can't just be me spewing whatever I want. There has to be a balance there as well. But if I continue to show up and I continue to improve in small ways every day, I'll get somewhere very interesting as a result. I don't know if I'll get to where I, I want to go, but in a lot of ways, I don't know that any of us really does know where we want to end up. We maintain our dreams and ideals as headings, as direction towards a horizon, but the closer we get to that, obviously the horizon continues to travel away from us. And the more we discover new territory, new interesting things along the way and learn about ourselves and end up hopefully where we're supposed to be. And I think the only way that I can really handle that uncertainty is to persist, is to continue, is to, con is to home in on the things that interest me the most, that I'm the most excited about, and to pursue those, and then continue to do that again and again and see where it leads me. I really wish there was a guarantee, but I guess maybe that would take the fun out of the adventure. Anyway. I guess from my experience, if I could share anything right now, it would be if you have a dream, like a really big dream that you believe in, maybe no one else does, or maybe you just don't see how you're gonna get there because it's so big and you have no idea what even to do. I would say, for one, if you can, this is talking to Jay a decade ago, buddy, just release the pressure, like get a job, hang on to that, and then work on this on the side because all the pressure I put on this to make money I did learn a lot and it was a good crucible to go through and I'm grateful for it, but it also ruined it and put me under a lot of stress that I don't think I needed. I can't change the past, but I probably needed to hear that. The other side of it is I also don't know how I'm going to get to the bigger sides of my dreams. Like I want all of these to exist in a visual medium. I don't want them to just be books. I want them to be movies and series and whatever fits them best. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I do know that I can make decisions every day to get me closer to it. I can continue to show up and home the craft of writing. I can continue to work on the craft of filmmaking and I can make changes as time goes to pursue the improvements in those arenas. And then just don't give up, just keep after it. We get so sucked into the stories of overnight success and people dropping out of college and starting. Your, that, that stuff's very, very outlier, right? I've been recommitting this year to the next decade. Like I need to put another decade into my books. I need to put another decade into the craft of filmmaking, however that looks, because I don't even know. And maybe in the next decade, I'll, I'll have an idea of where I'm headed and that's okay. Like as long as I continue to believe in that, like life, there's a lot of life left to live. I'm gonna weather whatever storms come and I'm just gonna keep going after it. And if that means at some point I just end up making a subsistence living so I can write my books and sit in my little hole wherever it is that I can afford to live, I think that'll be okay because they're that important to me. And I hope that whatever your dream is, is that important to you. Because if it is, then no one can stop you. you just gotta keep going after it.